corporate acquisitions. And then some humans somewhere are off maintaining, usually or often in the form of a page like on Wikipedia, uh, the distillation of facts. So they're off reading sources and from their uh, readings, they're distilling these facts and putting together onto a page and you're engaging with that page. What we're doing is attempting to play the role of those humans who are off distilling those facts. And so we're actually not just searching for documents as on the regular web, but we're trying to get you straight at uh, sort of the entity web. And here we see, you know, kind of listing of those companies. So I'm going to do a slightly, uh, just to show you a little bit more of the power of the language, I can constrain on the complement of the preposition. And so now I'm looking at cases where X bought Y for Z dollars or for Z yen. And in all these cases, we see in case of Pfizer and Wyeth, $68 billion, Kmart and Sears, uh, $11 billion. So the complement of the preposition is a powerful constraint. And finally, I'll do... Um, Another constraint, which is a, a context constraint. And so in this case, we're basically mixing traditional keyword search with this sort of deep grammatical searching capability. And so we're seeing here, I'm looking for the word media, and now I'm constrained within the media sector, or I can constrain onto types of things as well. So we can look for uh, corporate acquisitions in the context of the where, where a, a chemical element exists plus or minus one sentence from the sentence that contained the gram grammatical clause of a company acquiring a company. You can see here that uh, we're able to sort of hone in and get uh, you know, pretty uh, unique results. So Cameco Core and General Electric are uh, in the context of some uranium enrichment. So you're able to sort of really quickly kind of hone in on stuff. And just to show that we're not just about business stuff, um, I'm going to go ahead and give you a list of people attacked by bears. And so if you look off to the right here, you'll see sort of a listing of people attacked by bears. So kind of riffing on this, I'll sort of jump out a bit. I'm going to show you a site that we just launched about a week ago. Uh, it's called the Attack Machine. Um, so we thought, well, I, I, I feel for a while I've been demonstrating like shark attacks and bear attacks and pit bull attacks and everyone seems to get excited about it. I think it's some kind of base human instinct or something. So we figured, well, let's just, let's do an experiment. Let's launch a little site uh, based on our API on a higher level, higher level set of reasoning and let's try to play around and see if we can really generate fully automatically generated content where a curator or where the typical, typical editor, you know, is, or, or a publisher or an author is like actually writing articles and editor tends to operate at a higher level, you know, kind of orchestrating the uh, publications by a number of authors. In this case, we're saying, well, let's take the editor up a notch and say you're actually orchestrating, you know, a bunch of sort of a fully automatically generated site. So the attack machine uh, basically tracks attacks that are happening uh, every minute of every day. There are vicious attacks occurring. I don't know if you guys knew that. Uh, some of them are actually quite horrible. Some of them are more sort of um, um, like verbal. In the case of politicians, etc. Uh, so let's grab uh, a particular uh, case. In this case, there was a pit bull attack uh, relatively recently, and I'll point out some of the elements of the page here. Um, so similar to the, so this is you know a significantly less geeky interface. Uh, you don't really have to type anything in brackets or greater than or less than signs, but you can leverage sort of the similar power. So one of the things you can do is you can see the people attack, the places involving people attacks and things attacked. And if I click on a particular one like uh, domestic pigs, apparently uh, somebody was busy training pit bulls uh, to uh, attack uh, domestic pigs. Um, the other thing I can do is I can leverage the media element, so I can just sort of click and then watch sort of a video right in place uh, of a particular uh, type of attack. I'll point out one other thing. This information right here is an example. Um, so I don't know if, how many folks in, out there have a blog or have ever tried for whatever reason to get their content ranked decently inside of a normal search engine like Google or something. So you're seeing a, a few hands going up like, you know, so if you, so one of the things that I'm sure you guys have noticed is that like, if you're actually trying to generate one of these sites in an automated way, uh, most likely you're going to get flagged like spam, right? And because spams, spammers are out there uh, taking advantage of, uh, you know, of they're trying to automatically generate content. And I think one of the key differences from our approach is we're trying to actually automatically generate content that's useful, as opposed to just simply trying to create a giant uh, place to, you know, get info. So one of the key things that you see here in this paragraph is. 
one of the important things for getting decent ranking, as well as you know, for humans to help anchor them, is to see some like really unique natural language being generated. So that's sort of another example is we can leverage our semantic understanding to actually generate some unique natural language. And so we see here that we're able to sort of come up with a quick categorization of you know how many, how often an attack, when's the last time an attack occurred, and on what types of things. And we're also able here, off to this uh, sort of middle paragraph. Um, leverage our knowledge of the fact that a pit bull is, you know, a breed of dog and, or is an animal, and based on that we can throw uh, some natural language content in there. So that's also sort of very helpful for um, publishers or folks, kind of new, less traditional publishers trying to generate content. Let me show you one more example um, of people uh, who are criticizing our president. So if we look here, not a great surprise, uh, the number one entry is uh, a woman named Sarah Palin, who some of you may have heard of. And here we'll notice a sentence that says, she criticizes President Barack Obama for blah, blah, blah. And so what I want to point out here is if you read the sentence, nowhere in the sentence is Sarah Palin mentioned. Uh, it's up to the reader to realize that the pronoun she uh, refers to Sarah Palin. And so our system, in order to sort of expose this entity web and be able to, to do this kind of entity level, granular, very granular uh, recommendation discovery uh, systems, we need to be able to recognize this because we as humans are A, really good at resolving pronouns and B, really get irritated by writing without this or reading stuff without it. So we get very tiresome to read things where the full named entity is continuously, you know, being stated. And so here we'll notice that our system is able to sort of extract that, you know, the sentence before, oops, um, the sentence before states that uh, uh, Palin goes adrift. So even in the sentence before, Sarah Palin's not mentioned, it's really her last name. And if you go to the actual article, you have to go up a, a number of sentences to see that sort of Sarah Palin is mentioned as the very first sentence. And you know, of course, as readers, we, we recognize this pattern a lot. So anaphora resolution is really important for exposing things on the entity web. We resolve things like pronouns, he, she, it, as well as things like the lawyer, the doctor, uh, the politician. So in addition to criticizing, uh, one of the things that folks do a lot uh, in when they're busy expressing sentiment, uh, negative sentiment, is they also mention berating folks, uh, bashing, thrashing, uh, maybe hating, etc. And so we thought it would be interesting to build some higher level functionality on top of this uh, that's a simple classification based on sentiment. And so one of the things that we've done recently is we launched a sentiment API, um, which allows as an entry point a particular entity. And again, just to show you, um, I'm going to sort of progressively walk further and further away from actual relationships uh, and show you how this foundation of entity and relationship mining uh, can sort of lead to different discovery techniques, but we're going to start off really close. And so sentiment is, in essence, taking a number of these sort of key ver uh, verbs and these key sorts of pivot points and able to present sort of a, a key uh, way to navigate this information. So in the case of Barack Obama, we can see that about 38% of the sentiment being expressed about Obama. So in our sentiment API, so I, many of you have probably seen sentiment APIs out there, which will sort of say things like, well, what, like, give me all the positive things, or give me all the negative things being said, uh, you know, about topic X. We sort of try to take it a step further and say, well, not just about topic X, but being said, you know, by topic X, by person X, uh, about topic Y, and then we try to distill down to who are the key critics and praisers of an entity. So in the case of Obama, he's getting bad vibes from everything, indeed, but he's also getting uh, bad vibes from Sarah Palin in particular. And, and, that's, uh, and we'll see here, that's the same query that I was just doing in sort of the more uh, geeky interface that our scientists and engineers use, you can see has now been distilled at a higher level experience where you see her blasting uh, Barack Obama, criticizing, etc. And so, in addition to you know, Palin, there's sort of a number of other folks that are sort of quote unquote sending bad sentiment or expressing bad sentiment or negative sentiment about Obama. Um, so with that, I'm going to jump back uh, into the deck. So this is sort of, so I mentioned systems like an army of seventh grade grammar students armed with a really large uh, knowledge base or dictionary. This is the anatomy of the grammar student in essence. So if you're 
uh, think about traditional keyword search. In traditional keyword search, documents are treated in essence as bags of